Hey PSA listeners, thanks for downloading this episode. If you enjoy the work I do, please consider becoming a paid member at paranormalskepticacademy.com slash membership or at patreon.com slash PSA. You will get extra member-only episodes and early access to each new episode at the $2 a month level. If you can't become a paid member, please subscribe to the YouTube channel P Skeptic Academy, share the show on social media, and leave a review on your podcast website of choice. Thank you for the support. Now on with the show. Pack your bags and join me as we head to Central California. Just outside of Santa Cruz in the city of Brookdale sits the Brookdale Lodge. Built at the height of the Roaring Twenties and hosting many famous people and politicians, many guests have come and gone, but Brookdale Lodge may hold ghostly guests that have never checked out. Originally the headquarters of the Grover Lumber Mill that was built in 1870, it was sold to a Seventh-day Adventist physician named Dr. F.K. Camp in the 1920s. He operated the lodge between 1922 and 1945, during the lodge's heyday. It hosted many celebrities, foreign dignitaries, politicians, and even U.S. President Herbert Hoover. One of its distinguishing features is the creek that runs through an atrium within the dining hall. The lodge changed ownership over the years, and it's said that during the 40s and 50s, the lodge played host to several mob figures and gangsters. Rumors started to spread that dead bodies were buried under the floorboards, and that secret passageways and rooms were built for various illicit means. During this raucous era, the niece of the owner, a young girl named Sarah Logan, was said to have drowned in the creek. She wasn't the only death at Brookdale. In 1972, a 13-year-old girl is said to have drowned in the mermaid pool. Sarah is said to have been seen wearing a white and blue Sunday dress in the style worn in the 1940s. She has been seen in several places to include the lounge and brook room. Some visitors have claimed to have been approached by a little girl looking for her mother, only to have the girl vanish. People claim to have seen a woman walking across a creek, as if walking on the bridge, but there is no bridge. They say this is the mother of Sarah, come to look for her lost child. Other paranormal events have been reported, such as the sound of big band music, the clinking of glasses and silverware, and other random noises. Late at night, doors slam and footsteps can be heard. In the guest wing of the lodge that was built in the 1970s, room 46 seems to be a hotspot of paranormal activity. Employees report poltergeist activity such as objects flying across the room. Several apparitions have been spotted here to include a teenage boy, a man with his eye hanging out of his head, and a man with a knife wound across his face. Psychics have been brought in and they were able to sense close to 49 separate spirits within the walls of the Brookdale Lodge. What are we to make of this? Is any of this true? Well, let's find out. In 1998, a show called America's Most Haunted Houses aired and the Brookdale Lodge was featured. However, something surprised me when watching it. Paranormal investigator and skeptic Joe Nickel was featured in this segment. Nowadays, you rarely if ever see a skeptic on any paranormal shows. The show rehashed the same events I mentioned earlier, eyewitnesses and personal experiences. Joe Nickel arrives and the first thing he said he does when investigating a haunting is to see if there is any evidence of a hoax. He says that Brookdale didn't have any overt signs of being a hoax or prank. Next he tells us that maybe the witnesses saw something real and that it's being misperceived. He interviews a few of the witnesses and gives them a questionnaire designed to measure their perceptibility and imagination. To contrast this, the show brought in a parapsychologist and a psychic. The parapsychologist worked closely with the psychic and the witnesses. Even in the late 1990s, they were using magnetrometers to measure electromagnetic fields because, 
According to the parapsychologists, there is a correlation to geomagnetic fields in people's ESP and psychokinetic experiences. Our psychic tells us that everyone has an electromagnetic field around their body, and she has the special ability to be able to read that field. And shocker, she says she interacted with a little girl named Kathy. I thought it was Sarah. She said this little girl followed her around during the walkthrough and was talking to her. Our psychic friend says she felt someone tug on her jacket, and the parapsychologist meters detected a spike in energy at the same time. Our parapsychologist tells us that spikes in electromagnetic readings correlate with paranormal experiences, and he calls this energy a memory. And to date this episode even more, he says that something with Polaroid film seems to capture patterns of the paranormal, but only when there is a high electromagnetic spike. I say to be authentic, every paranormal investigator must start using Polaroid film from now on. Our parapsychologist seems to think that his measurements, the psychic visions, and the experiences of the visitor's employees leads him to a haunting. But Joe Nickel has something to say. Joe says that he hasn't seen any evidence of anything to suggest a haunting or supernatural activity, but he does see a correlation. He sees a correlation between the people who don't believe in ghosts having never actually seen the ghost and people who do believe in ghosts having seen this ghost. And this leads him to this line where he says, quote, Ghosts must be believed to be seen. Brookdale Lodge, a mountain retreat for celebrities in the 1920s, the home of mobsters and gangsters in the 40s and 50s. Through the years, the site has seen many guests come and go. I'm not sure when the building was abandoned, but it was after 1998 and before 2015. In 2015, a new owner bought the lodge and started renovations, and in 2017, they finished Phase 1, the restoration of the motel and new retail spaces. What we see with Brookdale is the classic sign of people seeing what they want to see and believing what they want to believe. Joe Nichols saw nothing that would indicate a supernatural phenomenon. However, on the flip side, the psychic and parapsychologist saw exactly what they wanted to see. What is telling and fascinating is the vernacular used by the parapsychologist. It hasn't changed in nearly 20 years. There is no evidence to show that Brookdale Lodge is haunted. But that won't stop ghost hunters, and it won't stop Zach and his crew. That's right, the Ghost Adventurers investigated this place in 2012, and I will review that episode for members only. Thank you for listening to Paranormal Skeptic Academy. If you like the work that I do, please leave me a review on iTunes and Stitcher. If you want to support the show financially and receive extra content monthly, you can sign up to be a member starting at $1 a month at patreon.com slash PSA or at paranormalskepticacademy.com slash membership. Like the Facebook page at facebook.com slash paranormalskepticacademy. Follow me on Twitter at cweb619 and subscribe to the YouTube channel at youtube.com slash pskepticacademy for full video versions of each episode and YouTube-only bonus content. Also, you can download each member-only episode for $1.50 at ParanormalSkepticAcademy.com under Downloads. Thank you for listening and supporting Paranormal Skeptic Academy. Schooling your favorite paranormal investigators.